Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We will continue our discussion on virtual memory and discuss further more techniques in virtual memory management. In previous lecture, we were discussing page replacement algorithms. So we will continue page replacement algorithms in this lecture too and see what other page replacement algorithms have to say. Next algorithm is least recently used. What does least recently used has to say? This algorithm states to replace a page that has not been used in recent past. Optimal page replacement algorithm focused on future and this least recently used algorithm focuses on past. Again, the example shown uses same string that we have used in both previous page replacement algorithms in order to make comparison among them in terms of page faults. Four frame size is shown in this example and you can apply it on any frame size given to you. So here you can see page number one is loaded in frame number one. Page number two is in frame number two. Page number three is in frame number three and page number four is in frame number four. Next required page is page number one, which is already present. So there is no page replacement. Since page number one is already present in frame number one, as you can see, so there is no page fault. Next required page is page number two and it is already also present in frame number two. Next requirement is page number five. Since page number five is not present, so we have to first create space for it. So according to this algorithm, we have to focus on past. So a look back is created here of size of frame size. Since four frame size is used in this example, so four pages look back is created. The page that is farthest away in past will be the one that will be swapped out. So we can see page number two is used in recent past. We cannot replace it. Page number one is further away. So we cannot replace it. Page number four is little more away while the farthest away is page number three. So page number three is the one that is used least in past. So we can replace page number three with frame number five. Next requirement is page number one again and page number one is already present. So there is no page fault. Next requirement is page number two which is also present here. So there is again no page fault. Next requirement is page number three since page number three has already been swapped out so we have to brought it in again what we have to do is make a look back or of four frame size so four pages look back is created so now compare the pages in the frames and the pages in this look back the one which is far away will be replaced as you can see, page number two is extensively used in past, so we cannot replace it. Next, 
for this so page number 2 cannot be replaced as it is used too much in past page number 1 is also used in recent past so we cannot replace it so page number 5 is also recently brought in so only odd one out is page number 4 which is not present in the look back so we can replace page number 4 with page number 3 as you can see here next required page is page number 4 again as we have swapped out page number 4 so page number 4 is required again so what we have to do is to create a look back we have to create a look back of four pages so let's develop a look back starting from page number 3 the look back is this 3 2 1 and 5 and compare the pages in the frames with the pages in this look back we have the frame structure as this this is the frame structure so page number 3 has been recently used in past so we cannot replace it page number 2 is also used recently in past page number 1 is little away page number 5 is the farthest away page used in past so the option we are left with is to replace the page that is used least in recent past so page number 5 is the one that is used least in recent past so page number 5 goes out and page number 4 comes in at its place next required page is page number 5 and we have the look back as page number 4 3 2 and 1 so making comparisons with the pages in frames and the pages in this look back we would find the odd one out the page structure frame structure is this one this is the frame structure so page number 4 is used recently in past we cannot replace it page number 3 is little far away in past so we cannot replace it page number 2 is further little far away we cannot replace it and the farthest away in past is page number 1 so page number 1 is used least in past it goes out and page number 5 comes in at its place hence this algorithm goes to completion for our understanding we maintained a look back but in the system a counter is implemented with every page table entry whenever a page is referenced the counter is set and hence it counts the number of times a page has been referenced the one having least value in counter will be replaced that means it has been used least in the past so total number of page falls in this case are 4 as you can see 4 page replacements have been made another example for least recently used is in front of you for your better understanding as you can see first 3 pages are loaded in the three frames here so next reference page is page number 2 since page number 2 is not already 
present. So we have to create space for it. And for this, we have to make a look back. Since least recently use focuses on past, we have to make a look back and see which page is far away in past. One is most recent, so we cannot replace it. Zero is recent, we cannot replace it. So seven is the one that is far away in past. So seven goes out and two comes in. Next algorithm, next page to be brought in is page number zero. But as you can see, page number zero is already present. So there is no page replacement. Next page to be brought in is page number three. So you can see here page number three is the next page to be required. And this is the frame structure. So we create a look back and perform the comparison with the pages in frames. 0 is most recent, 2 is little far away, 1 is though very far away. So 1 is replaced with page number 3. Here you can see. Next re reference is page number 0 and 0 is already present. Next reference is page number 4. So again, what we have to do is to make a look back. So look back of three frames is created here. That includes page number 0, 3 and 0. 0 is intensively used in past, so we cannot replace it. So and 3 is also used in past. So the only option we are left is page number 2. So page number 2, which is not used in recent past, it goes out and page number 4 comes at its place. Hence, the example goes on till the end. I hope you can complete it by the end of the string, applying least recently used on every next reference. I hope this must be clear to you now. Let's now move on to next algorithm, which is least frequently used. It is an approximation or substitute to least recently used that says replace a page that has least frequency of use or least intensively used in past. Again, it focuses on past. It is applied or used rarely as here wrong page may be selected for replacement. The one which has just been brought in memory may be replaced as it has least frequency of use in past. So this selection may turn out wrong. Hence, this algorithm is rarely applied. Next algorithm is not used recently. It is based on the principle that the page which has not been used in recent past may not be required in near future. So such a page must be replaced by the incoming page. Additional information is added to every page table entry for this algorithm, which are addition of reference and modify bits. If a page is referenced, its bit is set to 1. Otherwise, the reference bit stays 0. And if it is modified, the modified bit is set to 1, otherwise remains 0. So the replacements are made by looking at these two bits. Next 
Next replacement algorithm is principle of optimality. It is based on prediction and prediction is based on the use of a page. If a page will not be used again in future, so it gets replaced with the new coming page. But prediction for whole or demand of pages cannot be made perfectly. Hence, this algorithm is also used rarely. Another page replacement algorithm is random page replacement and it states that all the pages in the memory have equal likelihood of being replaced. There is no criteria for selecting a process for replacement as at random any page can be replaced even the one which is required or needed next. Decision is made very quickly here. So again, this is not considered an effective algorithm. Hence, it is used very rarely. Next topic of discussion is address translation by direct and associative mapping. We have finished with the page replacement algorithm. So now we coming towards the address translations. There are three mechanisms for address translation. And the first one we are going to discuss is the direct mapping. As already mentioned, this translation process in previous chapter. So here again, the same procedure is represented in front of you. In direct mapping, direct translation from logical to physical address is done using page table. CPU generates a logical address. This is the logical address consisting of page number and offset. The page number is indexed with page table. Page number gets indexed with page table. To get the respective frame number and the offset is then linked with this frame number in order to get the actual physical address of main memory. So here you can see the frame number is obtained from page number page table and offset is added with it as it is. The corresponding physical address then is generated. This translation mechanism have already been discussed previously. Translation look aside buffer is used to reduce the number of times main memory is accessed. Since the page table is also stored in main memory along with the process, so main memory is accessed twice. Once to access the page table and second time to access the required frame. In order to avoid this twice memory access problem, a special buffer or cache is maintained to store the page table entries. One buffer is maintained for all the page table entries that are most recently used of all the processes in memory. So with this buffer, the page table in main memory will not be accessed and translation look aside buffer will be first examined to locate the frame number. Hence, reducing the memory access to single attempt. How translation process works? Given the logical address, the processor first examines the translation look aside buffer 
to get the frame number in order to access the physical address. If page table entry is found in translation lookaside buffer, that means translation or TLB hit is observed and frame number is fetched from there. Offset is linked to it and respective physical address is generated. But if the respective page table entry is not found in translation lookaside buffer, that would result in TLB miss. So the same old mechanism then will be used that is to first get page table entry from main memory and then get the required frame from main memory leading to again two main memory accesses. Translation lookaside buffer gets updated time to time in order to accommodate the latest pages and older pages are deleted replacing them with new ones. Here you can see the difference between the direct and associative mapping. As we just discussed both of them earlier. In associative mapping, let me highlight it. Here is the associative mapping procedure. So, in associative mapping, the use of translation look aside buffer, here it is, is quite visible. Translation look aside buffer mainly is a buffer or a cache located in a RAM or a small space within the RAM has been reser reserved for uh, this type of buffer. So translation look aside buffer is very much visible in the diagram for associative mapping. You can easily figure out the difference between both the direct mapping and the associative or indirect mapping. When uh, in the direct mapping, the page table is located, here you can see this is the page table and it is located in main memory. Page table holds entries for all the pages within a process and whenever a process is loaded in RAM, its page table is also loaded along with it. So the page table is located in main memory in direct mapping. So whenever a page is accessed from page table in order to get the respective frame number to reach to the actual physical address. So the mechanism is clear. We have already discussed the complete mechanism earlier. First operating system finds the specified page table entry in the page table. Here you can see and there is frame number added with every page table entry. So in first step operating system gets the page table entry. This is one access and in second access the operating system then jumps to specified frame number in main memory in order to get the required address. So the frame number and the offset is added to get the required physical main physical memory address. This is the mechanism or a two cycle approach to get a specific address within main memory using direct mapping. While in associative mapping this two cycle process is reduced to one. How? 
Here you can see. Translation lookaside buffer is a buffer or a cache that holds pages of all the processes that have been used in recent past. So it is a sort of cache. Cache stores the pages or the addresses or the applications that we have used in recent past. Similarly, translation lookaside buffer also holds those pages that have been used in recent past. So this translation lookaside buffer is maintained in form of a cache holding all the recent page table entries of different processes that have been used in recent past. So, how associative mapping works? Operating system first finds the specific page table in the translation lookaside buffer. So, here you can see, for example, one page is reference. So, operating system first, instead of going to page table, first looks for that specific page in translation lookaside buffer. And if it is found, if that page is found in the translation lookaside buffer, so the frame number is fetched from there. So page number is attached with page table entry. So operating system directly then jumps to that specified location within the main memory address in order to get the instruction. So here only single access to main memory is made in order to get the actual location. In direct mapping there were two accesses. First time page table entry was accessed and in second time the specific location was accessed. But here the location is directly accessed from the translation lookaside buffer. Keep in mind that page table is maintained for every process which means every process has its respective page table. But translation lookaside buffer is maintained only one for all the processes. No process has its own translation lookaside buffer. Only single translation lookaside buffer can serve different processes. But it may happen that translation lookaside buffer may not hold specific page of specific process. Then for that operating system has to then move on for direct mapping technique. Associative mapping was an alternate for direct mapping in order to reduce the two cycle access or two cycle fetch technique. But if a process is not found in translation lookaside buffer, a page is not found in translation lookaside buffer, then operating system has to go or move on for the direct mapping technique. So this is the diagram. When translation lookaside buffer is successful and when it is not successful. So here you can see a virtual address has been generated that consists of a page number and an offset within the page. Offset means the location of specific instruction within this page number. So if you are looking for the address of a specific instruction, 
within the page so virtual address is actually referring to that so page page number is mentioned in virtual address and the offset offset means how far a specific instruction is within this page so a uh, virtual address is generally generated by cpu now first we go for the associative mapping the translation look aside buffer technique what operating system does here since look aside translation look aside buffer consists of pages from different processes so operating system has to search one by one all its entries in order to find out this respective page that has been generated by the CPU or the or referenced by the CPU. So one by one all the locations are searched out in order to find this respective page. If the page is found that means a translation look aside buffer hit is done. That means the associative mapping technique is successful. So operating system gets the frame number there, adds the offset with it and here you find the actual address of that specific instruction. This gray area shows the specific page number, this one, here you can see this one and this offset shows how far that specific instruction is from the start of this page. So this is in case of translation look aside buffer hit or TLB hit we generally say. But for example, a specific page is not found in translation look aside buffer. Operating system did execute associative mapping technique but it is not successful. Then operating system has to move back to direct mapping and operating system then first finds out the page table of respective process and finds a respective page the required page within page table of that process from there operating system finds the frame number frame number is written here as you know is a part of page table entry and the frame number is added with the offset in order to again get the same location of an instruction. But in case the page is not found even in the page table entry, then what? This is then the case which we had discussed earlier in previous discussion, the case for page fault. Now then operating system has to move on to secondary storage in order to search out the required or referenced page. Again this is a complicated technique. Operating system first has to execute the associative mapping technique and find out every single entry of the translation look aside, look aside buffer in order to locate the required or referenced page. But if the page is not found there, if it is found, TLB hit occurs, that is fine. And in one cycle, operating system reaches to the main memory instruction for uh, main memory address for the specific instruction. But if TLB miss occurs, if the associative mapping is not working or not successful, then operating system has to execute the direct mapping. Both the techniques are embedded in your operating system. And in that case, operating system then finds the specific page table for the process and locates the page table entry. From there, it gets the frame number, adds the offset with it, and leads to, uh, it leads to the specific instruction, location of the specific instruction in main memory. But it is a two-cycle process. You have to access the memory twice once for the page table and next time for the specific instruction and again if the page is not present in the page table that means the protection bit associated with that page is zero then is the case for page fault 
an operating system then searches the secondary storage in order to find that required page and then it first creates space for it in main memory here as you can see if the page fault occurs this is the page fault situation the page is found in secondary storage so operating system now has to load that page to RAM but before that operating system has to create a free frame or a space for that page in RAM if the free space is available the page is loaded there but if the space is not available then operating system has to execute some relative or effective or efficient page replacement algorithm in order to swap out one of the blocked pages to secondary storage and load or load the required or referenced page or swapping this referenced page at its place in main memory. So this is how the mapping mechanism works in operating system. Both the techniques are implemented direct mapping and associative mapping. Associative mapping is effective as it results in single cycle or single memory access while direct associative results in two memory accesses. Last topic of discussion is pre-paging in this chapter. Pre-paging is a concept in which operating system in advance loads some of the pages to main memory in an attempt to reduce the page faults. The loaded pages are those which are not yet referenced. So this may overload main memory with useless pages. Hence, pre-paging may create problems for operating system in managing main memory. So pre-paging is considered an issue for operating system. That is it. This is the end of this chapter. I thank you all.